Pastor said that they, they're going to be preaching for this entire month of October around the full gospel. And uh, it's important for us to live in the full gospel, the full gospel of the Word of God. And I'm going to hopefully touch on a few points this morning. And they took their theme basically from The Matrix. How many of you watched The Matrix? Around the 90s, not so. If you haven't, you need to go and watch it. Go and have a look at it. And Morpheus makes this remark. This is what he says. He says, this is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. How do you know that that, that relates to us as Christians? Knowing that the red pill is the gospel, the blue pill is what life has been lived today, oblivious of what is happening around them. You see, we need to come back to this, the understanding of who we are in Christ Jesus. We need to understand who our God is. We need to understand that we do serve a holy God. We serve a righteous God, and God demands righteousness from us, a righteous living. We have to learn how to live a righteous lifestyle, and you cannot live a righteous lifestyle outside of the full gospel, of understanding the gospel of that, of what Jesus Christ came to do for you. And the one thing he's come to do, to set you free. <laughs> But the problem is this, that still I see within the church, not many Christians are free. Many Christians are struggling in their Christianity, and the result of them struggling in their Christianity is this, they have not taken of the red pill. <laughs> not taken of the full gospel. Not living in the realm of the fullness of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ but a compromised lifestyle. We cannot compromise. We are not as Christians in the position to compromise in the world that we are living in. You cannot be a Christian that is going to try and live in the world and live in the church. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You hear what I'm saying here. I gave my life to the Lord at the age of 20 years old. You know what? I wish I could have given it sooner. <laughs> because during that time, God has taught me many things. Did you ever stumble and fall? Of course I did. Did you ever mess up? Of course I messed up. We're going to talk about a guy in a moment who really messed up. And I'm going to show you when he stepped into the fullness of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, things happened. You want change in your life? Serve God. You want your family to change? Serve God. Be an example to those around you. You want to change your office? Be an example to them of how to live a righteous life, not a compromising life. Now, the scripture that we're going to start off with is this. Found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through to 5. I'm calming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm breathing. It's coming down. Okay. Let's read together. Now, brothers and sisters... I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He says, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. You see, there's a stand we have to take as Christians in a world that is messed up. My, the world is in a wicked place. You hear what I'm saying to you? Just watch the news. Verse 2. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I pass to you as of first importance. This is the importance of the gospel. Listen to what it says. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. I want you to take that scripture, underline it. I want you to take that scripture and make it a top pocket scripture. I want you to write it out for this month. I want you to read it every day. And I want you to begin to live 
by that of what Paul wrote to the Corinthian church. And I guarantee there will be a change in your life. So my title of my message this morning is this. Who do you say Jesus is? Now you can go around and, and, and do that. I mean, this is a wonderful exercise to do with family and friends and even those that sit alongside of you. Now, I mean, not many people do these days. They sit alongside you on the benches. They kind of sit a few feet away. But if somebody is brave enough to sit alongside of you, ask them, who do you say Jesus is? You see, because history tells us, this is what you need to understand, that history tells us there was a man who was born into this world His name was Jesus, and he lived in Nazareth. History tells us, but many people do not believe it. And this is the problem with the world today. We have something like 7 billion people on this planet. Just go and work out the percentage of who really believe who Jesus Christ is. Oh, there are so many so-called Christians. Let me tell you, I want to say this to you, that when the rapture takes place, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns for His church, do you know what? The church is still going to be full. They're going to come to church on Sunday and say, where's the pastor? Well, the pastor's going to come to the church on Sunday and say, where's the congregation? That's going to be a a whacker for you, won't it be? Opening up and nobody's there. It's going to happen, people, and it's happening. If you're watching your news and what is happening now with Russia, (laughs) do you know that we are on the brink of a third world war? It is as close as a sneeze away. You hear what I'm saying to you? Just go and watch. You need to begin to pray. You need to begin to read your Bible. You need to go back to Ezekiel 38. You need to kind of read that whole chapter, and you will see that we are right there on the brink. And when this happens, we need to be ready for the trumpet. Woo! Stay to your notes, George. So when we look around, this, this is the saddest thing. Do you know what? is the major sin within the world today. Pride. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49 says, the reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was as a result of pride. Do you know that the pride community celebrated an entire month of pride? Do you know that on Pride Day, the, 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 the White House was lit up in the rainbow? The colors of the rainbow, well, it's not the full colors of the rainbow. We have the full colors of the rainbow. It's a church, not the gays, not the LGBTQ, U, V, X, Y, Z. Hello? Not them. You know, the shocking thing, if you go and look, and I don't do much Facebook, but I do a little bit of YouTube, that there is, there's a hospital in America for young people. It's a, it's a child hospital. And the children are coming to this hospital demanding that they have sex changes because they feel that I'm not a a boy or I'm not a girl, at the age of 12 years old, they are performing these operations. I heard a preacher the other day say this. He said, if your three-year-old runs into into your lounge acting like a tiger, you kind of laugh, not so. Ah, Come on, tiger, watch out. The tiger's going to get me. When your 10-year-old does it, you kind of look up and say, hey, boy, you've got to grow up. You can't be a tiger for the rest of your life. But yet, we see that people want to change who they are. I want to say to you, God made who you are, accept you, who you are. You need to learn to know who you are. God created you. If you don't understand who you are, stand in the mirror. 
Check out the mirror. What do you have? What you have will tell you who you are. Where's this gender thing come from? Hmm? We're going to raise our children for who they want to become. You're going to stand before God's judgment and be judged by God's wrath for changing that what he created. I see I can say these things. Don't worry. <laughs> Stay by your notes, Galia says. Okay. So, so humanity openly rejects who Jesus Christ is. So humanity says this, there are many roads to God or to Christ. My Bible says, and Jesus said it himself, the only way to the Father is through the Son, Christ Jesus. You want access to God? You come through his Son, Christ Jesus. Of that what he had come to do for you. He came to die for you. He came to set you free. He came to remove the bondages of the enemy. John 10, 10 says this, that the enemy comes to rob, kill, destroy. We see that happening through the nations, through lives, through people who, who want to have a, a, a change of identity. I want to say to you young people, be careful what you put on your body. Hello, young people. Oh, there you are. Okay, I was looking for the young people. I, I watch it. I, I watch the young people. And it's lovely. I, I love what, what they do, and I love the way they express themselves. But you need to be careful. Because once you put something on your body, you can't take it off again. And your body is the temple of God. You have to look after God's temple. Not so? Now, I know we have a tattoo artist, yeah, and I'm not trying to stop her from doing it, but she needs to counsel her, her clients. And she's a very good, I'm not saying who she is, okay? I'm not saying that. Amy, I'm not telling them who you are. She's very good. So if you need one, I'm not saying don't. I'm saying watch. Especially you women who put the rose you mark them so and you can face your roots. 40 years down the road is for lap. Hang I water so under two. And now you've got to go and visit your doc all over and say, I need, I need, I need a, a liftment in life. I've seen these roses. You. Yeah. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. You know, my, my mother got old, and she got very wrinkled. And every wrinkle told a story. But I can remember the younger days of my mother, because where we lived, she was the, the, the guru of makeup and hair and curlers. The days of curlers. And then they would put this white stuff on their face. As a result of that, there's six years between my brother and myself, six years between. <laughs> Who wants to go to bed with a living walking dead? <laughs> do, do women still wear curlers? I don't know. You know, it's like, do, do you still put curlers in your hair? And go, my mom used to, I mean, she was a curler, curler king. Everybody went there, asked Ramona, you can tell her. They used to come there from Nakab. I, I remember one, one lady, uh, her name was Joey, come with her gown. I never forget, she had red hair. My mom used to do her hair. But then she had these slippers with her toes sticking through the one because of her toenail. And we gave her the nickname, Joey Toenails. But you know what? She was proud in her identity of being a woman. Sorry? There were, no, <laughs> there were no angle grinders to do the job, was it? <laughs> Stay by your notes, George. So they reject even the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if Jesus ascended, my Bible says that he will descend. With a shout, by the way. Can you imagine the shout that's going to happen? But, but the problem is this, and this is my problem. My problem is this, that 
that the world believes more in science than what they do believe in God. Do you know what? They'll give you dinosaur bones, but they will not show you the bones of giants. My Bible speaks of giants. It speaks of men that were nearly as tall as cedar trees. It speaks of that. They were there. The giants were there. But they won't show you that. You see, my Bible says this. My Bible says that, that mankind is only 6,000 years old. We're relatively young in comparison to what scientists say. Scientists say, no, there are prehistoric men who evolved by looking what we see today. I don't see apes evolving today. Hmm? But yet, Christians even believe that and teach that. Even of the universe. The things that they believe about the universe is crazy into comparison of what my word tells me. We have a whole movement by, I think it was John Hubbard in 1950s, he started a church called the Church of Scientology, where uh, Tom Cruise is one of the members. Many actors belong to the Church of Scientology. But the saddest, many Christians believe more in science than in the Word. What am I saying to you? If you want to live in accordance to the full gospel, then you need to begin to believe this, from the front to the back, even the maps and the leather on the binding is real. Are you with me? We can't take portions because this is what many Christians are doing, you see. And this is why we are not seeing the victory that we should be seeing within the lives of men and women. Because they're saying, oh, well, there are certain things that are good for me, certain things that are not good for me, so I'm going to tear the pages out. Hmm? <laughs> I dealt with, in my time here, with many patients in the Duncan Hospital. It was my regular stomping ground just to rile up the demons but the problem is, they smoked the Bible. I gave them the Bible, and I came back one day, and I, they said to me, Pastor, thy Bible as a blief on suke nog een. I said, whoa, that's exciting. Who else are you doing Bible study? I said, nee, het rook so lekker. <laughs> ons draai die zola, ons kan hem lekker rook, die papier is te dun. I said, that's the last time you get the Bible. Thank God now, the Bible, you can listen to it, you know, it's on your phone, you don't have to smoke your phone. So, so let's come back to a question. What do you say? See, I've got to bring back home. What do you say? How long have you been a Christian? How long have you been serving God? But the question is, is this what I need to come back to and we're going to hopefully get there? is, are you born again? That's the big question. Now, we find in the three Gospels, Jesus makes the statement, ask his disciples, who do people say that I am? Who do people say that the Son of Man is? So again, I'm asking you the question, I'm coming back to that, remember, what do you say? Who do you say? Say so Matthew 16, go and read it. Matthew 16, verse 13, go and read it. I'm going to just run through some of the things. I want you to go and look at that as well. This is the reply. So the disciples reply to him. Some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But then Jesus pulls it a little bit close. He, he pulls it back in the conversation. And he says, yeah, yeah, I hear what people are saying. But what do you say? So it's good enough to say, oh, well, I go to church on a Sunday. Do you know I live in a garage? I might have sounded like last week a little bit of a V8 in my coffee. But I'm still a man. I haven't changed. I'm not a car. doesn't mean to say that you sit here Sunday after Sunday. 
that you're a Christian. Hmm? Hello? Christian means this, Christ-like. So be careful if you say, I'm a Christian. Because I want to see the likeness of Christ in you. I want to see the likeness of Christ through you, the actions of Christ being portrayed in and through your life. How do you handle situations? How do you handle your wife when she comes to bed with curlers <laughs> and a face mask? Those were some of the things that were banned in my marriage contract. No curlers, no facial hooters at bedtime. And no Lexingtons hanging from the side of the mouth. Those were important things in my day of growing up. So again, Jesus comes back to this. But who do you say that I am? Now, the reason why so many people, I believe, are, are not serving God and producing the full gospel within their life is because Galatians 2 verse 22 is lacking. The fruits. Do you know where the fruit starts if you look at Galatians 22, Galatians 5, 22, 23? It starts with love. Love. You have to know how to love. Do I love the skew and the, the bent out there? Of course I do. But I don't love what they're doing. And I mustn't be afraid to speak out. Hello? Who am I? You see, I'm, I'm the body of Christ. I'm a Christian. I have God's love. I should have the love of God within me. Now, the rest of those seven are squeezed between love and the last is self-control. You see, if you do not have love, you don't have self-control. You're not going to be able to manifest the others in between. And that is what is happening. This is what is happening without the world today. Those things are lacking within the lives of people. We need to learn how to love. We need to learn how to have self-control. As I thank you, Wop Gemak, moet nie die proppie weggooi. Hou die proppie. Een glasie mense. Twee op die meeste need a yellow bottle me. <laughs> then you're going to sound like my neighbors last night. <laughs> Woo! The word says, do not get me drunk with wine, but be drunk with the Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, am I speaking to somebody here? <laughs> Listen. This is my problem. Sorry again, I'm, I'm leaving... I don't know when Pastor will invite me back to preach again. He might never and say, You see, the greatest shaking presently taking place in the church is compromise of the full gospel. Now, I have nothing against A meetings, they're very important. But the problem with many of these meetings where you go to because you have uh, problems, sexual problems, pornography problems, gambling problems, alcohol problems, drug problems is that they, they live under remorsefulness, regretfulness, even repentance. But they are not born again. You see, I know if you are born again. If you are born again truly from God, and if you have been set free from all that sin, you do not have to stand up in a meeting and say, Good morning, I'm George and I'm an alcoholic. See, alcoholism is then removed. Because then I have a new character. Hello? I saw that with my parents. They were alcoholics. But the day they got saved and born again, I saw them at weddings having a glass of champagne. You're thinking, oh, Jesus, they're going to fall back. No, they were born again. Hey, I'm not saying you must go and have two champagne. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just... If you are truly set free, you are free indeed. In the deed that you have committed, you are totally free. God washes you. God cleanses you. He fills you with His Holy Spirit. Now you live under the power of the Holy Spirit. A new nature. 
takes place. Woo! Oh, I miss preaching. <laughs> okay. Are you with me still? Okay. I've still got time. So, coming back. Coming back. Who do you say? Jesus is. So what do you say? Now who do you say? Now, this is interesting. When Jesus asks this question, look at the reply of Peter. You are? He says, you're the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon, son of John. Notice what he uses. Look what he says. He's saying, yeah, you are earthly. And yet you have received a heaven revelation. You are born of man. You are not yet born of the Spirit. This is what he's saying. You are not yet born of the Spirit. This is the Spirit's job to give you revelation. How many of you know that if you are born again, you get revelation from the Holy Spirit? Your life needs to be filled with revelation of the Word of God as the Word of God becomes alive in you. Woo! You need God's Word, people. You need to read it every day. You know, getting on in life, you can't see Swalaka anymore. And so my Bible, I can't find a Bible big enough words. So in the morning when you're quiet time, you're still dirty blara and you, you know, you still got sleep in your eyes and you struggle to focus. At the beginning of this year, I found something beautiful. I found an app where the Bible is read to you. Yon changed my life. Hey, I can now both see the word and read the word and hear the word. Hey, it's like, like newness coming to my life. If you haven't got that app, do it. Because now you don't have to have an excuse. I didn't have time reading my Bible. All you have to do on your way to work is put in the earphones and let it rip. You can, I'm going to tell you now, you can read through the Bible in less than a year. <laughs> I still read through my Bible every year, every year. From Genesis to the maps. <laughs> I use the maps in leap year. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, I know I lose myself. Okay. So, so again, he has this revelation. Now, listen to this. This is where the Red Bull comes in. An earthly revelation must come from a God given revelation that will change the hearts of sin soaked people. Once you have that revelation of who Jesus is, life opens up before you. You see, when Peter had this revelation, look at Jesus' response again. He says, Peter, you did not learn this from human being. Now I say to you, you are Peter. You see, there's a name change. You see what happens when you get born again? Now all of a sudden, you're no longer George or Georgina. You're now Christian. I'm Christian, George. I'm Christian. Why? Because I've now taken on the nature of Christ. You see, when I'm born again, I, I receive that nature of Christ in my life. A nature of knowing how to love. To love others. Those difficult people around you. To love them. And then the fruit begin to develop within your life. You see, because now you have His nature. And so he says, upon this rock, upon this revelation, I will build my church. We have to learn how to build our lives upon the rock. Look at the next slide. So upon which rock are you building? This again. Are you building your life on the blue pool? Hmm? Now I can say that when you get older. Don't, 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 don't go down that road. Don't go down that road. Some people are laughing like nervously. Uh, I know what he's talking about. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm one of them. Uh, don't worry, you'll, you, when you grow up, you'll understand. But the red pill is the importance, the importance of knowing what Jesus Christ has come to do. 
It's upon Him that I build, you see. Only a heaven birth can occupy heaven. An earthly birth occupies earth, but a heavenly birth occupies heaven. Jesus taught His disciples to pray, Our Father which art in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because we have two births. You bring heaven down. You lift earth up in your born-again experience by taking of the red pill, the full gospel. Are you with me? Listen, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I'm going to, Galia is one of these. She believes once saved, always saved. And I believe that. If you have a truly born again, heavenly experience, you are eternally saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Because you have the choice to backslide. You have the choice of allowing the enemy into your life. You have the choice of opening up your mind to the things that are happening around the world today. You have the choice of accepting it or rejecting it. You have the choice. Are your people backsliding? No, they're not backslidden. They need to get saved because they were never saved in the first place. Oh, can you stumble and fall? Of course. Peter makes this amazing revelation. And then Jesus begins to tell them of his journey to the cross. And Peter goes back to Jesus and says, hey, don't talk like that. You're not going to die. You're here to build and establish your kingdom. Jesus turns to Peter and says, get behind me, Satan. He was just the one who had that revelation. And who's the one that denies Jesus three times? Peter. Who has a fish fry with Jesus? Peter. Who stands up on Pentecost and preaches and 3,000 souls come to know Jesus? Peter. Don't tell me your life is so mixed up that God can't fix it. You undermine God if you say, God, you can't deal with this situation. You can't deal with this sin in my life. You know what he's going to say? I died for it. That's what he did. See, you need to come in. Hey, man, listen. I, I, my life, I hang around the cross. I really do. Because I need to remind myself every single day of what Jesus accomplished on my behalf. By then I'm able to walk in his victory. Not in the victory of my abilities. Not in the things that I'm able to do. I, I'm not able to do the things that, that I've done in the past. I'm not able to do the things that I'm about to do in the future. It's only through him and Holy Spirit who dwells inside of me, who knows who I am in Christ Jesus. Are, are you with me? Okay, let's skip that. Are we okay? I've got five minutes. That's fine. Last slide. An earthly birth must be exchanged for a heavenly birth. Please write that down. Hold that. You see, earth-born is earth-bound, but heaven-born is heaven-bound. Philippians 3 verse 20 says, but we are citizens of heaven. Notice this. We are citizens. You're not citizens of this world, for goodness sake. You might have an ID. So I need to show your age. Because the photo on there does not look like you. Huh? You are heaven bound. Where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. Where does he live? In heaven. Who's working within us? Holy Spirit. Hmm? Jesus coming back. He's going to call Holy Spirit back. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. Oh no, that's the next scripture. Listen to this scripture. This is also. This born again experience is a faith experience. Jesus said this humans can reproduce only human life. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. John 3, verse 6. 
Jesus, yes, speaking to Nicodemus, this is homework for you. I want you to go and read uh, the whole chapter of John chapter 3, where again, Jesus has a a conversation with Nicodemus. And he says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. I want to say to you this morning, you have to be born again to experience a passport into heaven. That your name will be written down in the Lamb's book of life. That when the books are open, your name will be there. The question is this that I need to ask you. Are you certain of your name being written now in heaven? Is your name already in heaven? Hmm? Come on, church. We We have to answer that question. 20 years old, out of the army. 1975, January, I come into a church, pastor looks up, now again, you you need to understand, in my day, church was, in the morning, was more Bible study, in the evening, was your evangelical service where you invited your lost friends to a gospel message, the pastor stands up, preaches, I'm sitting about four rows back, Never forget, his sermon changes to a gospel message. And he looks over his congregation, which was a handful of people. He knew everybody by name, except me. He said, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior right now, you're going to burn in hell. You want to burn in hell today, then you need to accept Jesus. And by you accepting Jesus, you need to raise your hand. Now, by the way, raising your hand does not get you saved. It gets the person's attention that you need salvation. And then he does the weirdest of weirdest things that he never did. He says, I want you to please stand. Is your mother in your corporal? I only stand to attention when the corporal said, now you're saying to me, Stan? I don't even know these people. And I'm fighting. He says, I want you to stand. Say, I can't stand. Why must I stand? But I don't know how long it went. It felt like eternity. My unsaved wife, no, she was saved long before me. <laughs> didn't stand, didn't raise her hand. I stand up, the only person in that entire church. And from that day, to this, I've served faithfully. Have, have I, did I mess up like Peter? Of course I did. Come on. Of course I did. But this is what happens when you have the born again experience. My last slide. Look at those three points. You are reconciled, you are repositioned, and you are restored into the presence of God. That is the full gospel, the simplicity of the full gospel. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life? 